All right, guys. So here's a nice little project for the morning. A customer dropped off a couple or a pair of buckets, I should say, and he wants me to remove these ears and go to a different style. He wants to put it on a different machine or this bucket doesn't fit his current machine. One of the two. I don't know. But either way, he wanted me to cut them off and they're going to design some new ones. And hopefully I get to put them on. I don't actually know just yet, but my job is to cut both of these off. And so I thought this would be a nice uh, opportunity to uh, show you the art gouging in a little better sense, uh, you know, a little bit more in depth. But a little twist to that is that uh, Hypertherm has been kind enough to send, send over one of their plasma cutters, their new PowerMax 85 sinks, uh, new technology and they have some gouging uh, tips or cartridges that go on the ends of them. So I'm excited and I figured it's a perfect time uh, to do a little side by side, not necessarily a comparison, but both options are available. Uh, so one I will be doing with standard uh, carbon arc gouging and the other one I will be doing with a plasma cutter. So I'm pretty excited. Uh, hadn't, must be honest, I hadn't done any plasma gouging. Uh, so, uh, I will do a little practice run on, on a test piece and besides uh, uh, relax uh, I've seen a lot of YouTube videos <laughs> a lot of people say that's funny so anyway I'm hoping that it'll be a nice simple process and you know there's there's pros and cons to both so we're gonna highlight both of those and you know each has their own application which is great uh, some some you can have access to uh, for power to say with uh, with 220 power so you can have that on site or you know the standard carbon art gouging that you run off of your your standard welding machine engine drive welding machine or plug-in plug-in unit so in either case we're going to be using them both so i'm pretty excited and let's get a sample piece started so i can give it a shot Okay, so I ran a few passes on the on the test sample here. I'm gonna try to stay as steady as possible. Uh, this is three passes on that one. Uh, just the one pass on that one. I didn't do any any type of manipulation. I tried to just go s steady and straight. So we're gonna give that a shot and see uh, how well I can gouge or plasma gouge this off of the off of this piece here before I get onto the bucket so let me go cool it down a little bit and that way it's not it's not already hot and then we can go from there all right so this is a new handle kind of on off in a sense green or yellow and you can adjust the power settings here which is neat but what I wanted to highlight is these new tips this one I'm not sure if you can read it there but this one says max removal gouging from 45 to 85 amps and then this one says max control gouging same amperage however let me go ahead and open them up one of them is more controllable than the other and i believe because it's got the little air jets around the nozzle set up differently so this one's the max control I guess it gives a little bit softer air uh, blowing at it. I don't actually know. We'll find out, right? And so this one is max removal. And it's got these jets on the outside. So pretty exciting. Uh, I'm going to go with the max control first. Give that a shot. Max control gouge. All right. Now it's pretty simple. Instead of having all the pieces like a standard... Uh, Plasma torch has all the the electrode and shield and all that. This the swirl ring, this has it all in one. 
a little circuit board in there. Very neat technology because from what I understand you can you can tell uh, the machine will tell you how many pierces it's had, how many cuts, things like that, trigger pulls I guess. And it's pretty pretty advanced so these are supposed to last a really long time. So you just put them on like that and pull the trigger. Okay, so let's get that uh, started. All right, so one of the nice things about this unit is that uh, once you plug in or put that cartridge on, it already knows what it's supposed to be doing. And here it's got that little yellow light there denoting that this is off. All right, so you get a hot you know, on off kind of setup. See? So that's cool. And uh, like I mentioned, you can't really even tell it you want to do something else. There you can when it's when it's in the off position. Well, let's say I put it onto plasma. As soon as I turn it on, it knows what it's doing. So you can't even get it wrong. So that's nice. Now, I'll go to turn back off there. So what's nice about this handle also is that it's got a the trigger or the selection of the amperage just press it and goes down see that's pretty slick so I'm gonna back it off to about 35 well let's go with uh, 45 and we'll give that a shot and see how it goes from there and then I'll just turn it on we're ready to go so let's go back to the table okay so got it all clamped up the table has been grounded i grounded that to the part itself and i'm gonna be running in this direction and hopefully you guys can see from there i'll be moving uh, the camera in a different uh, different angle as well possibly on the other side but this is the first the single pass so i'm going to try that first with the lower setting uh, it's set at 45 amps and maybe that's enough maybe it's not i don't know uh, I'm a little nervous because hey, it's my first time right now and I don't like to retake or reshoot or <laughs> refilm So you're learning as I'm learning if I screw up, you'll see it and you know, we'll learn from that. So here we go Okay, so that was my first pass. That was pretty interesting. It, uh, it worked pretty fast, so that was cool. Very neat, very nice and clean. Uh, I do need a little bit to go a little bit deeper. That was just on a single pass. And so far, man, it's very impressive. That's good. Uh, let me try that again. I guess the only thing now would be to watch my distance so that I don't gouge into either of the parent metals too much. So let's give that a shot again.
Okay. So far so good. Can't necessarily see the separation line yet, but it looks like it's there. So let's turn it around. Okay, so this one we're gonna try and do a weave pass on there and see how that works. Okay, still don't see the separation line, but now I can probably just go in a straight pattern right in there and try and get it up. hot okay well that worked well not bad for a rookie right first time i do it so not bad came out pretty nice and of course it takes a little practice with anything but for the first time it's all right i didn't get into the got into one of these a little bit yeah i sure did that's all right you know, now I know what to look for. So now that we got a trial run on that, I know what to do and what to see as I'm going and uh, how to manipulate the torch. Uh, one of the things you'll have to get used to, and same, similar with the art gouging, uh, standard carbon art gouging, is you'll have to get used to how the air flows. Uh, so in this sense, the air comes directly from the middle of the of the plasma cutter itself now right here whereas with the carbon art gouging i'll show you in a minute but the air comes from the one side of it 
Uh, the rod is in the center and the air comes from the one side. So let's let's uh, show you that next. I'll do the carbon arc gouging first and then get back with you on this. That way you can kind of see the comparisons right away. All right, so some of you have asked about what machine I use for arc gouging. I use the Dynasty 350. And for the thing, it just hides back here in the corner. It gets all dusty. <laughs> but uh, either way, I normally run about 200 amps for quarter inch carbons, and it works really good. Uh, usually a shop machine, or for some reason, this shop machine seems to burn a little hotter than my uh, engine drive uh, within a few uh, amps. So sometimes I can normally get away with about 195 or so, and, and it'll be fine. Whereas on my engine drive, I'll need it between 200 and 210, maybe even up to 220, depending on on uh, the position I'm in uh, to make sure that it ignites or um, you know the, the the size of the the weld itself so anyway so this is what I use and let's get to it <laughs> could I have used the grinder sure but I also got this so I just trying to chip away the paint uh, so I can get a good start starting point Here we go. Hey, there you go. Hopefully you're able to see that. Uh, if not, I can uh, turn it around. We're going to be doing some more gouging, so hang tight. Let me get this moved around. There you go. So I'm going to do the opposite sides, that side, that side, and that side all at once. And that way I don't have to keep uh, turning the bucket over. So I guess this will be a little bit of a high speed on that section. Then I'll slow it down so you guys could see these uh, more in depth. Okay, turn the bucket around. I'm uh, gonna get this section off here.
All right, so you saw that was with the arc gouging, a carbon arc gouging with a stick electrode, carbon electrode. So now looking at the difference between the plasma gouging and the carbon arc gouging, I see an immediate concern. The plasma gun will not fit in that area. So, and in that area. So that's uh, one thing that you got to consider when you're using the plasma cutter for gouging. Uh, I will most likely have to do both of them with the with the uh, carbon gouging, uh, electrode gouging, because that just won't fit, right? It just if it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. So uh, that's one disadvantage, unfortunately. But other than that, uh, I'm gonna try and get all of this here with the stick electrode our carbon electrodes and I will do this outside with a plasma just to show you how that works so that's something that you'll have to uh, take note of in your situation okay so let me go ahead and and cut this guy off and this guy off with the electrodes and I'll do this with the plasma all right here we go So that was the fastest gouging I've ever seen. <laughs> it came up pretty fast there, huh? So anyway, I got that one off. It turns out I gouged into this material a little too deep because that was this parent metal. Turns out this piece here did a little step up and I thought it went originally flush with the back of the bucket skin and they wrapped around there. But either way, you can fill it with a MIG. So now the next step will be just to uh, smooth that off with a flap disc or a grinding wheel and then on to the next one the next one i'll be using the plasma gouging uh, for as much as i can as i mentioned with uh, not being able to get underneath those um, pin bosses so that's the only spot that i won't be able to do that with all right let me change uh, buckets okay so i've swapped out uh, buckets for this other one to get these off and I ended up changing the tip to the max removal tip and it's still at 45 amps and so I'm going to see how that works. The other one was very fine in that it seemed like the center oxygen jet, sorry, compressed air jet was very narrow. So we'll see how this does here on there and on these other sections uh, up in here. So uh, again. It won't fit in some of these spots, but I'm gonna try and go around them or avoid those areas and then I'll just get those with the carbon art gouger. Okay, here we go.
Okay, so that looks about as good as I can get it. You can see the separation line there with the, with the plasma. Did pretty good. However, this gun will not fit in under there. Uh, and you do have to maintain somewhat of a close arc. And to be able to see this back here, maybe a little bit of challenging, it can be done. But this one is the one that gets me right here. That and right there. Because I'd have to turn this around. Now, they do offer, um, Hypertherm does offer a straight torch, which um, instead of it being at this degree there, I don't know exactly what this one's called, but the other one, <clears throat> the other model points almost directly straight out that way, uh, specifically for gouging. So that would, that would help in this sense a little bit in that I could get a little bit under there. But as far as continuing that, really can't get there. And it would help here as well. And if in case it's getting too hot, the handle's getting too hot, they do offer a shield. I will be putting those in the in this video as well. But overall, I really like uh, the, the quick uh, setup of this uh, plasma. It's pretty neat because you just really just literally got to pull the trigger and run with it you're you're good uh, whereas with the other one you have to have your your holder let me show you as with this one here you have to have an additional cost of this holder and the carbon electrodes and this one does take a little bit more skill similar to uh, welding and the same type of weave pattern or, or straight line depending on how you weld and whereas this one pull the trigger and go uh, go until you see the separation line. Um, I get off, asked often how that this how this works. And what it does there is, if you can see, the little air jet holes underneath there. That will blow the material away as you create the arc. I'm sorry, I'm so shaky because I don't have my stand on me. But this is how it works. The air jets will blow the molten puddle away. See, whereas uh, here in this situation, I can access underneath that opening from there and there. So that makes it much easier in this particular case. So uh, let me continue with this and I'll give my final rundown of the two in a second. Well, there you go got it off you can see the separation line there and then it came out good uh, i concentrated on sacrificing the ears instead of the bucket material so that's why i got a little deeper on that end but so long as we didn't um, get into this parent metal too much then we're okay since we're not going to be using those 
And so I thought I'd just give you guys a little side-by-side, -side, not necessarily comparison, but an overview of what each of these can do. This one is pretty neat. Uh, very fast, uh, very quick uh, setup. Just light it up, pull the trigger, and run. And this one here, of course, takes a little bit more skill uh, because it, the rod will stick, uh, just similar to stick welding. And so, you know, it just depends on what you're more comfortable with. Each has their own place in gouging. Of course, you have the added benefit of cutting with this one, right, with a plasma cutter. But as far as um, speed, this one's easier to set up and easier to learn. You don't need any any uh, long-term built-up skill to say you can just start cutting right away. Whereas this one, you do have to be familiar with stick welding to begin with. And then of course you'll transfer that knowledge into a very similar pattern with, uh, with the art gouging. So I'll clean this guy up, but that's pretty much it for this video. It seemed like uh, it was a nice trial run. Um, this is a very nice machine. I am a little biased. Uh, I try not to be because I've just done this for so long. Uh, done this art gouging for so long. I've been art gouging with one of these since the mid 90s. So I'm very, very comfortable with it. Uh, but this is new technology and uh, much more updated and much more handy. Really neat. Really, really neat. Okay, so that will do it. Uh, thank you guys for watching and I hope you learned something from it. And uh, we will catch you guys on the next one.